Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Zimbabwe starting as Mutapa for EU4 1.32 Origins. So Mutapa is a nation in Southeast Africa and it has been buffed significantly with the 1.32 update. It was already a powerful and rich nation thanks to the gold mines in our vicinity, but our new national ideas are insane inflation reduction and goods produced in traditions. Then we got discipline, trade efficiency, death cost, awesome ideas all around. And our mission tree is even more insane, giving us perma claims all around, giving us the awesome controlled guild mining as state privilege, we can even release and play as Zulu, one of the most powerful militarily focused nations in the game, and we can even form the nation of Zimbabwe. All around awesome idea set, awesome mission tree, and this will definitely be one of the most popular nations in EU4 after this update, both in single player and in multiplayer. Before we take a look at what we need to do as Mutapa, if you enjoy this video and find this guide helpful, please consider leaving a like, it helps out a lot, and if you want to see more guides or other EU4 videos, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. So to kickstart our campaign as Mutapa, first we need to fulfill a few missions, but before that we're gonna go into our decisions and introduce the vision quest. Next we're gonna go into our estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy religious state and embrace singular cult. Now this is a new estate privilege for these nations down here, which increases the strength of a cult we pick. By the way, cults are for fetishist nations, we're fetishist, and it removes stability loss upon the ruler's death. Very powerful privilege, give it out. And then you can choose your primary cult. I recommend taking this one for plus 20% improved relations or this one for plus 2.5% discipline. I'm gonna take this one. Then we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility and increased levies. And we're gonna give the merchant guilds patronage of the arts and indebted to the merchant guilds. Now we're gonna sell titles, but we're not gonna seize land yet because our nobility is above 65% loyalty, which means we can take this mission, balance the council. And it gives us some monarch points and enables us to continue down the mission tree. Now we're gonna seize land. We're not gonna be getting any allies because, well, we're gonna be fighting everyone we're in contact with, so we are gonna set some rivals. I recommend rivaling the two guys that are obviously available to you, and we're also gonna hire some advisors. Get an inflation reduction guy if you have him. I have him, but he's a level two, so I'm just gonna get this tax guy. For your diplomatic advisor, take an improved relations, diplo rep, trade efficiency, or spy network guy. I seem to have all of them, so I am gonna take this trade efficiency guy. And for mill, take a discipline or morale guy. I don't have them, so I'm gonna take this fort defense guy. We're still making a ton of money by the way. Now we're gonna hire two more infantry regiments and recruit a general. So now, after a couple of months pass, we are gonna get a very bad event, the fate of Zimbabwe, the regression of Zimbabwe, where our capital over here gets basically obliterated, the city of Kami Monument goes down to level zero, but it will give us some nice stuff as well. And it'll also give us claims on these provinces right here. So now, we just need to wait for that event to fire, meanwhile, we can improve with our subject Butuwa over here. And there we go, a couple of months have passed, and this is the event regression of Zimbabwe. So, we lose stab, gain devastation in our capital, gain lots of negative modifiers for that province, the monument is destroyed, and we also get minus yearly legitimacy and minus tolerance of the true faith. A pretty bad event. And there we go, that has happened. Now what we need to work towards is getting to one stability so we can unlock this mission right here, the fate of Zimbabwe. So now we're just waiting to stab up twice. You may already be able to do it twice, but I already lost one stab earlier, so I'm gonna need to wait a little more. And there we go, a few months have passed. I can stab up once again. There we go, and now we can unlock this mission right here. So let's see everything that it gives us. Boom, there we go. So, not only do we gain perma claims on all of these provinces right here, but we also gain dev in our capital while constructing buildings. So as we can see right here, constructing non-defensive buildings will increase development of the province. So you build a building, you gain dev. You upgrade a building, you gain dev. Right now it's at three, but just by building buildings, we will be deving up our capital. If that's not a powerful mission, I don't know what is, even though we do get significantly nerfed in order to take advantage of this. But the most important thing we wanted is these permaclaims, which means we can kickstart our wars. You should also take these decisions after you stab up. And like I said, now we're gonna be declaring on some of these nations right here, this one, these two guys, this is this guy's subject by the way, or these guys up here, whoever is weakest, in my case Maku over here, they are guaranteed by Kilwa, so I'm just gonna declare on Lundu along with their overlord, Maravi.
and once you defeat these nations you will be full annexing them i won't be full annexing them because this one province right here is occupied by these other guys no big deal i'll just fight them as well and i'm gonna take all their money once you own these two provinces right here, Lundu and Kalonga, you will be able to unlock the mission Iron Cloth. It gives us some infantry combat ability and other army stuff, as well as a conquistador. Excellent! Now that I'm done with that, I'll simply be declaring on these other guys right here. Basically fight whoever is the weakest out of these four nations right here. We need to clean them up before moving on to Kilwa. And there we go, I've beaten these guys up, but I will be making them my vassal instead of annexing them so I can get in this war with Moravi and finish them off too. That's a nice little workaround right there. Boom, there we go, now they're my vassal and now I can just finish off Moravi right here. And there we go, Moravi is done, I'll be full annexing them. Easy, you may have already finished off these guys too in your case, in my case I can't since they're guaranteed by Kilwa. Now while we're waiting to fight these stronger guys right here, we can focus on advancing this mission right here, the Legend of Op here, where we need to have 3 gold producing provinces with 10 dev. Of course, that's gonna be happening to Zimbabwe automatically once we build buildings, it will get up to 10, and since we're not spawning feudalism, we'll be getting it from from over here anyway, we can focus on devving up this province right here up to 10 in production and once we annex our subject, we'll also be devving this province over here up to 10 production as well. So of course you will want to activate the Encourage Development State Edict there, this is all one single state and we'll be devving Masapa up first of course. At this point we're probably just waiting to embrace feudalism since we can't fight Kilwa because we are so far behind in tech. Remember we start off with tech 2 while they start off with 3. And by this point I've already devved up Masapa to 10 production. Once 10 years have passed you will of course start annexing your subject Butwa. And there we go, I've annexed my subject of Butwa. Now we can also take the mission Handle the Torwa after we annex them, which gives us Dip and a mercenary company. Now we can continue to dev this province up to 10 production as well. Now because we unlocked that conquistador from our missions, you can add him to your army, send them to this province over here, and we're simply gonna go explore the next province. The goal is to get to the cape down here. So just keep walking along the coast. And there we go, I've just reached the cape with my army with the conquistador, you should be able to do the same in no time. Now we can unlock the mission Uncover the South. This is an amazing mission. We gain perma claims on the entire South Africa region, basically this region down here, but not only that, we also gain a colonist plus 15% global settler increase and 400 settlers arrive in the cape. Let's take a look at what that looks like boom there we go we just colonized this province for free we're so rich we can colonize so many places i do recommend taking the native coexistence policy so you don't have to deal with natives but you can also take the native repression policy and go and click this button in every province it will cost some mil points but at least you won't have to deal with those guys anymore so i am gonna take that boom there we go we do have a free colonist so you may be able to send him here but that isn't allowed unfortunately so we'll just send him right here boom there we go let's go back over there click this button and then i'm gonna go deal with these guys right now we're still waiting for feudalism to appear in our provinces and we're deving these two up to 10 production and in my case it seems that these guys over here they aren't guaranteed by Kilwa anymore so i will be taking advantage of this and declaring on them in your case, you probably own all of this directly already. For your tier 2 government reform, you should take Martial Society. And by now I hope you've done that because my colonists just died, so you gotta act quick once you get them. And there we go, I've defeated these guys and of course I'll be full annexing them. During this point, I've also devved Butua up to 10 production as well, which means I can turn off that edict. And now 2 out of 3 of our gold mines are at 10 production. Also, 2 out of 3 of the gold producing provinces are above 10 dev. Now, we just need to build some buildings in Zimbabwe. You may be tempted to dev it up, but it's so expensive. Due to the abandoned ruins modifier and plus, it's in Highlands. So we're just gonna waiting for tech and then building buildings there. During this point in the game, you can find some allies if you want to, to sort of deter kill from attacking us they may be tempted to do that because they're so much more powerful of course once 10 years have passed if you have any other vassals up here you should be annexing them as well and somewhere around this time you should be able to embrace feudalism 
and of course we can tech up. Now it's a matter of catching up with Kilwa and tech and getting ready to fight them. Once you fully colonize this province down here, I suggest sending your colonists to this province up here and colonizing that one. This is so we can gain contact with the Great Lakes nations up here and with the Congolese nations over here. We do want to open up more expansion routes than just Kilwa, right? So as soon as we colonize this, we'll be getting ready to fight these guys and these guys too. At this point, we're making crazy money as you guys can see. Armies are up. In fact, I'm way over force limit and we're still making so much money. We just don't have nothing to use it on yet. We need more tech. But once you do have this colony set up right here, you can start spying on these guys right here and these guys over here too. And once you're ready, simply declare on whichever nation that you border up here or over here is the weakest. I'm gonna be declaring on Kazembe right here. Let's see if I can co-belligerent some of these guys. Eh, it doesn't seem like it. Let's go. And there we go, I've beaten these guys up, they gained a few provinces too while they were at war with me and I'll be full annexing them. Another expansion path has been opened into the Congo Basin and soon I'll be fighting these guys up here. You may already have a little more than me, or even a little less in this region, but while we're preparing to fight Kilwa, we'll be cleaning up these guys who are much easier to fight. Of course when you finally get to Admin or Diplotech 4, you will want to start building buildings immediately, particularly in Zimbabwe first. And we also need to have 5 churches for this other mission, so go ahead and build those churches in the province where you will gain the most from them. Once you construct those five churches, you will be able to unlock the Mawari Belief mission. You gain some stab, but more importantly, we can advance down this street right here, and we can also unlock this mission right here, Strong Rulership. Excellent. Now this mission guides us towards conquering the entirety of South Africa, or at least colonizing it. And as we can see, by building this church right here in Zimbabwe, we've gained one tax dev. Once you finish colonizing this province right here, which connects you to the Great Lakes and Congo, I recommend continuing your colonization of the South African coast. Basically, we want to get as much of the coast as possible before Europeans arrive. We may even be able to get all of it before they arrive. So just start colonizing. I'm gonna send my colonists over here. Now I'm gonna be continuing my conquests over here in the Great Lakes region, declaring on this nation right here. Can we co-belligerent someone? We can. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking religious society. Now that I've defeated these guys up here, I will be vassalizing both nations so I can get into a war with some of these other nations. Now that I've defeated Rwanda, I will be giving their provinces to this vassal over here. Of course, you could do this as well, or you can take the provinces for yourself. It really is up to you whether you vassalize some nations and feed them, vassalize nations but don't feed them, or take everything for yourself. Now I'm just gonna be finishing off these guys. For your first idea group as Mutapa, I recommend taking quality ideas. We will need to buff up our awesome army even more, and we will need strong ships too. Trust me, quality ideas for your first idea group. And now that I've defeated these nations up here, I'll simply be giving them to my subjects. And there we go, just like that, we own almost the entirety of the Great Lakes region. You may be expanding more over here rather than over here, but we're pushing well into both regions by now. At this point, if you're caught up on tech with Kilwa and you feel strong enough, you can declare on them. I'm still one tech behind, so that's why I'm not declaring on them yet. And there we go, a building is about to finish constructing in Zimbabwe. Let's see what happens. Boom, and there we go, we gain some dev from buildings, like I said earlier. But we also do want to start devving it up a bit, even though it is so expensive. We do want to get it up to 20 dev. We already have a temple and a marketplace here. Now we just need stab and dev. So you will want to dev it up in admin and diplo and save some mill to catch up with Kilwa, but mainly dev up with diplo because we do want to maximize that gold production. And once we get Zimbabwe up to 10 as well, we will be able to take the mission Legend of Op here. And we will finally be able to unlock the Controlled Gold Mining Merchant Guild's privilege. This is one of the most powerful privileges in the game. Here it is, Controlled Gold Mining, minus 75% monthly gold inflation and minus 75% gold depletion chance. Sure, it does give us plus 5% all power costs and minus 15% goods produced in gold producing provinces, but it's still so, so worth it. Take it immediately after you unlock it and inflation won't be a problem anymore, nor will be gold mine depletion. At some point before fighting Kilwa, you will also want to start the construction of ships. I recommend heavies and galleys, so I will start construction on a couple of heavies. We do have a very low number of sailors. And once we've caught up on Miltech with Kilwa, it is time to declare on them. This won't be a difficult war, but it will be annoying because they have a tendency to ally nations up here. So it is time to declare on them. We will declare for Sofala right here the gold mine. 
If you have an artillery regiment, I do even recommend barraging their level 1 fort to get this done as soon as possible. And there we go, a very easy war versus Kilwa actually, as long as we have the same Miltech. I fully occupied them in no time, pieced out their allies, and now we'll be taking as much as possible from them, even almost full annexing them. I'm gonna be leaving them with two provinces, Mombasa up here, and the little island of uh, Zanzibar right here. And that's our war with Kilwa done. A nation that seems scary at first, but once we're on par, it's so easy to defeat them. Now we can take the mission, conquer Sofala, where the center of trade over here is increased by one and we gain a marketplace as well, a very strong mission, and we discover a big portion of the Indian Ocean. Very nice. At this point we're chilling a bit and focusing on getting Zimbabwe up to 20 dev. And once we have 20 dev in our capital Zimbabwe and 2 stability, and of course if we finish the previous mission, we will be able to take the mission restore Zimbabwe. Boom, there we go, all the negative modifiers are removed, the center of trade is increased by one level, and our monument, the city of Kami, is built up to level 2. Sure, you could build it up to level 1 before that, but there's not much of a difference between level 2 and 3, we don't really care about the cost of fabricate claims, and we still get tech cost from level 2, which is excellent. That mission is done. Now all we need to do to form the Great Zimbabwe is get 400 dev. Easy enough. Now we're declaring on this nation right here, they don't have any allies, just continuing our conquests elsewhere now that we've dealt with Kilwa. Very easy war, we'll be full annexing these guys as well, and it'll be easy wars all around with either of these guys or these guys up here. They're way behind on tech, and we're much, much more powerful. Now by declaring on this nation as well. Fight whoever is easiest, we're just expanding. And now that I've defeated these guys, I'll be full annexing them as well. Like I said, easy. And now I'll be declaring on this nation up here, now we're basically pushing to get 400 dev. And there we go, now that I've defeated Lunda, I'll be full annexing them as well. And at this point, we're above 400 development, and we can take the mission Eclipse, Great Zimbabwe. Now we'll change to an Emperor, and we'll get the event Surpassing Zimbabwe. There it is, and we can choose to become Zimbabwe, gain new traditions and ambitions, or stay as Mutapa. You need to form Zimbabwe, one of the most powerful nations that have been added to the game so far. Boom. Yes please, there we go, an amazing golden map color, and we gain even more insane national ideas. Guys, look at this man. Plus 10% morale of armies, as a tradition. Plus 20% trade efficiency as an ambition. Construction cost minus 15, goods produced plus 10, national tax plus 10, and monthly gold inflation minus 20. It's like we don't even have the gold mines, man. Port defense plus 25, attrition for enemies, income from vassals, and production efficiency. Awesome, awesome national ideas focused on our military and our wealth primarily. We'll be swimming in ducats. Right now I'm losing money of course because I just got out of this war. But we'll be swimming in ducats in no time. We're already so big man. We have basically the entirety of South Africa, everything that's colonized. And yeah, that's how you form Zimbabwe. And by around the year 1500, your game should look a little something like this. We start off as Mutapa, one of the most powerful and richest nations in the continent of Africa. A tough start because we don't have feudalism. And we start with Tech 2 compared to our much more powerful neighbor Kilwa. But by annexing these nations following our insane mission tree, we get to colonize the Cape. We get to discover these provinces colonize them without exploration and expansion ideas. Even though our little event here for Zimbabwe set us back a little bit, I do think it's still a very fun addition. But we beat that event, we got Zimbabwe up to level 22, we got the city of Kami up to level 2, we got 5 gold mines by now. These 3 over here, Sofala, the one we took from Kilwa. In fact, actually one even spawned over here, the one I colonized. Of course you could save scum all of these to spawn gold, but who has time for that man? Who has time for that? 6 gold mines super powerful we defeated these small nations here colonized this province right here and then we went on to conquer the nations in the great lakes and in the congo you should be looking something like this too maybe you already have the entirety of the congo and you're not over here like me or maybe you don't have the entirety of the great lakes region like me it doesn't matter all that matters is you're pushing here and here and
and once we caught up to tech with Hilwa, we destroyed them very easily and basically almost full annex them. Now, we're on the great powers list. Well, of course, if we embrace the Renaissance, we'll be seventh more powerful than the Mamluks, and we will be devving up the Renaissance now that we're done with those first tough conquests in order to form the super, super powerful nation of Zimbabwe. I already read out the ideas to you guys. You guys know they're insane. This mission tree is even more insane. We gain some awesome stuff from all of these missions. Very fun to go through. You can even form the super militarily focused nation of Zulu, the Prussia of Africa. It's supposed to pop out somewhere over here. You get to do that once you finish this mission right here and the event Nguni militarization happens. And then you get to choose to play as Zulu. Of course, you will want to weaken yourself and not grow as powerful as this if you want to play as Zulu. But if not, you can just pick to not do that and continue your conquests as Zimbabwe. After this point, we will continue to expand in all the regions we're still expanding. We still have a colonist. We will continue to colonize the coast of South Africa as far as we can until that guy disappears, of course. We only have it for 100 years and we'll continue to expand in all the same directions we've been expanding. We'll take care of Madagascar. We'll take care of Congo, the Great Lakes. We'll start pushing up into Somalia and the Horn of Africa and you'll own the entirety of Africa in no time. You could even go exploration and expansion later and start colonizing Australia or South America or something. The choices are yours and man. Mutapa, Zimbabwe, very fun, very, very powerful nations that have been, well, sort of buffed and created for EU4 1.32 Origins. Definitely play this nation, man. You will not regret it. Probably the most fun playthrough in Africa I've ever done and the Mamluks are one of my favorite nations, if you count them in Africa, of course, so that's saying a lot. And after this point, you will just continue to blob in all directions. Of course, we've taken quality ideas for our first idea groups to buff up our army even more. After this, we'll be taking trade ideas for your second idea group to make even more money. After that, I recommend taking quantity. And after that, I recommend taking economic, even more goods produced, even more dev discounts, even more powerful armies. What more could you want? The choices after that are up to you. But I recommend taking quality, trade, quantity, economic. And after that, I recommend taking both offensive and defensive for some South African Space Marines. For your next government reform, I recommend taking centralized power and then for tier 5, I do recommend reforming into a monarchy and then following through with all the monarchy reforms. Sure, you could become a horde. I don't really recommend it. We have a too powerful army and too good of an economy to become a horde. So I do recommend reforming into a monarchy at tier 5. By this point, of course, because we're so rich, we've been building a ton of buildings. We've constructed all of these marketplaces and all the blue provinces, the provinces with centers of trade and estuaries, and you will continue to do that all around the regions you will be expanding in. Zambezi, Congo, Great Lakes, Zanzibar. I do even recommend moving your main trade node to the Ivory Coast later and transferring from Congo, the Great Lakes, Zimbabwe, Zambezi to the Cape of Good Hope and then from the Cape of Good Hope over to the Ivory Coast. Of course, if you don't plan on expanding over here too much, move your main trade node to the Cape of Good Hope and collect from there and transfer from all of these other regions to the Cape of Good Hope. We've also been building some churches, quite a lot in fact, due to that mission, but also some more because we do gain some nice ducats from it, at least in the early game. Kilwa has been building some here and I inherited them. No need to build any more churches, man. We're too rich for that. Of course, we will be building workshops. We have super high value trade goods, gems, ivory, cloth, iron, man, the choices are yours, salt, copper, very high value trade goods over here and in the eastern portion of the Congo region as well. And later, of course, you will be building manufactories. There is even missions for manufactories, maximizing your trade income even more. And like I said, you'll continue to follow the mission tree, get in contact with the Europeans, modernize the state, look at all the bonuses that this mission tree gives you. And this final mission is pretty crazy to monopolize East Africa. And like I said, by around the year 1500, your game as Mutapa to Zimbabwe should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Redhawk live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything and you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.